All right, in this video, we're going to find the equation of a line and we're going to take two different approaches to get the same answer. Um, we're going to leave our final answer in slope intercept form. So I'm going to keep that in mind most of the time for your math classes. If you're finding the equation of a line, most of the time you will be asked to put it in slope intercept form. Not every time, but be careful, make sure you read the entire question. So we have uh, two points and we want to find the equation of the line that passes through these two points. Now watch the whole video at the very end, we'll come back and see this visually as well. The first thing I always ask myself is, do I have a slope? Um, we don't have a slope here. So if we don't have a slope, we need to find it. Well, since we have two points, we can find the slope and the formula for the slope is y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. So from here, we can go ahead and plug in our values. Um, we can call this x1, y1. We can call this x2 and y2. So plugging in our numbers, y2 is negative three. We subtract y1, that's negative eight. Notice I'm, take your time here. You're subtracting a negative. We're actually uh, going to end up adding that right here in a moment. x2 is negative two. We subtract and then x1 is negative five. So when we work all this stuff out, I'm gonna go ahead and clean it up a little bit. That's negative three plus eight because we are subtracting right there. And then we're subtracting a negative number because y1 was a negative eight. Same thing at the bottom, negative two plus five. And we simplify this down, negative three plus eight is a positive five. Negative two plus five is a positive three. So here is our slope. Now, I know I said two separate approaches. So once you find your slope, um, the thing I always, always do second is I go ahead and find the equation. Now this is where we're going to do two separate approaches. So we'll, uh, here's one approach, the equation, and we're going to use, um, we're going to start with point slope. Whereas, I'm going to come over here in a moment, um, another approach, we will do uh, equation, and we can go directly, we can go ahead and directly do uh, y equals mx plus b. Nonetheless, I want to cover both approaches. So I'm assuming you've heard of these two forms. You got point slope form, and that's what I'm gonna do here. The equation for point slope form is we take y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. Now we have to go and do one of these two things because we want to find the equation. All we have right now is the slope of the line that passes through these two points. Now, this y right here and this x, that's not a y1 or a x1 or, or, excuse me, that's not a y2 or a y1, that's not a x1 or a x2. Uh, we want to leave this x here and this y here in the equation. So we have y minus, now y1, we have negative eight, is equal to m, we found our m over here, five thirds, times x minus, x minus, and now what's x1? Negative five. So let's clean this up kind of like what we did with the slope since we're subtracting a bunch of negatives. We have y plus eight is equal to five thirds times x plus five. Now, if your instructions were uh, read like this, if it said leave in point slope form, you could leave it just like that. But remember back at the top, I said I want my final answer to be in slope intercept form. So this is point slope. We need to clean this up and get y by itself. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna leave the y plus eight alone. I'm going to go ahead and distribute this 5 thirds. So 5 thirds times x is 5 thirds x. And then 5 thirds times 5. All you really do here is multiply your 5. So you get 25 over 3. Because remember, when you multiply fractions, top times top, bottom times the understood one. So that's where I'm getting that 3 from. Now, a couple of things you can do from here. What I'm gonna do, we can get y by itself by subtracting eight right now. And we wanna subtract eight from this 25 thirds because these are like terms. Neither one of these terms right here, that eight, neither one of these have a variable. So we want to combine those together. So I'm bringing down y, cause that's all I have left over here. Five thirds x, nothing to combine with that. And now just a little uh, review of adding fractions. We gotta subtract eight. So how about 25 over three minus 24 over three? 24 divided by three is the same thing as eight, but now we have common denominators. 
So since we have common denominators, we can subtract our numerators. 25 minus 24, that is a positive 1, and then we don't need to forget our denominator. So that's our final answer in slope-intercept form. Hang out, watch the second approach, because you may like this, this approach here better than this one. It leads to the same answer, since we're going to get our answer in slope-intercept form anyway. Now here's the one I use a lot because in my opinion it's a little bit quicker, but it's entirely up to you. So y equals mx plus b. Now back here when we did point slope, you remember how I said we leave the y and the x alone? Well for this particular approach I want to plug a y value and a x value in and I can use either this point or this point and I promise you we will get the same answer. I have some other videos on my website that cover this exact same topic but since this is a commonly missed question it doesn't hurt to do another video. Go back and check out some other videos once you're done wa watching this one where I do this approach here quite often. It's the one I do the most. So let's just pick a y value from one of our points. Here's the thing you have to be careful with. Whatever y value you pick, I'm going to pick negative 8. I'm going to plug that into y because that is a y value is equal to m 5 thirds, same thing there. Now, since I picked the negative 8 for that y, I must pick this x value of negative 5. Just make sure that x and that y, that it is a ordered pair. You don't want to go swapping these things around. And then we have plus b. The goal here is a little bit different. We want to find b, whereas over here, we just wanted to get y by itself. So therefore, we have negative 8 is equal to <coughs> uh, 5 thirds times negative 5. Similar to what we had back here, except watch your signs, we have negative 25 over 3 plus b. So notice here, what I did is I took 5 times negative 5, that gives me negative 25, and then 3 times 1 gives me 3. Now we want to get b by itself, so let's add 25 over 3 to both sides. And again, we're stuck with that same idea of finding a common denominator. Well, notice it's working out very similar to this. Uh, it's just reversed on us, but everything's still going to work out the same way. Negative 8 is the same thing as negative 24 over 3. Negative 24 divided by 3 is negative 8. But the reason why I did this is because now we have a common denominator, and negative 24 plus 25 is 1 third, and that's equal to b. So you might say, okay, this doesn't match this. Well, this is where the approach is a little bit different. We want to come back and say y equals m, our slope is still going to be 5 thirds, x, and now we bring down our b. Since we know what b is, we know b is plus 1 third. So the approach is a little bit different. When I come back and write this final answer, I am leaving the y and the x alone. I'm not plugging anything in there in my answer because, and the point behind that is, you have many, many, many points that you can plug into this x and this y. I plugged in the negative 8 and the negative 5 just to help me solve this equation for b. But once I did that, I leave the y and the x in my problem just like I did back here. And notice you are getting the same answer. So hopefully you've hung out this long. Let's go type this equation in in Desmos and let's make sure these two points are on that line. And here's what we're going to do here. So y equals 5 thirds x plus 1 third. In Desmos, y equals 5 thirds x plus 1 third. There's our line. What were our two points? Our two points were negative 5, negative 8. So negative 5 comma negative 8. There's an ordered pair. And then negative 2, what was it? Negative 2, negative 3, I think. And let's just, I'm going to make this a little bit bigger. So you can see it. Well, there's the negative 2, negative 3. So that point clearly lies on our line. And if I zoom out a little bit more, oh, there we go. Negative 5, negative 8. So our work is right. We have found the equation of a line that passes through these two points. And hopefully you do see that visually right here using uh, Desmos, a free calculator app for the computer. Works great. You can even get it for iPhone and Android as well. But there you have it. That's how we find the equation of a line when you're given two points and I showed you two separate approaches that lead to the same answer. And that's it for this video. Hope it helped.